Hey everybody, this is Nikki and I'm here to do part two of 54 <laughs> segments of a uh, T-Slim and Medtronic 670G uh, comparison. And I managed to get through it in 11 and a half minutes. Um, the first part, which is kind of the physical pump and the buttons and the screen and stuff like that. Um, and now I'm on to alerts. Um, which is kind of a shady area for me because I feel like there's always something going off um, but I also do often have two pumps or three sensors on and in that case there is often there is always something going off um, however with that being said in the last couple of days I've learned how to silence the 670G like completely which I didn't really know you could I didn't believe you could do um, I've learned how to silence the 670G completely and I finally turned off all of the alarms on the T-Slim. Um, when I first got the T-Slim, it was recommended that I leave all of the alarms on just so I could kind of get used to what Basil IQ was doing, which I thought was a great idea. Um, and I really enjoyed kind of, you know, learning what it was doing. And then I just got used to hearing all the alarms. So you add the 670G back in and then there's just stuff going off all the time. Um, so it's been a quiet couple of days with the two pumps and that's been interesting because um, I didn't know that could happen. But I will say that with neither pump can you silence the lowest low. I can't think of what they're called. But basically your most um, dangerous lows. Like you just can't, you can't silence those. Those are going to go off anywhere you are. Um, everything else I think you can silence. So I'm going to talk about that for one second because this is one of the questions was about alerts. Um, I will tell you that there have been people in my group who have been talking about silencing their 670G for over a year. Um, I, I didn't know you could do it. It never really occurred to me. Um, I couldn't stand the alarms, but at the same time, I couldn't imagine missing stuff, and I just never really felt the need to do it. Um, but I, I've overheard people talking about it. So the other day, I finally asked. I said, if I'm going to run the two pumps in order to do kind of, you know, some experiments, then I need to silence them so my family doesn't put me outside, which is what they're about to do. Um, and I was surprised at how quiet the 670G could be. Um, what I did find though, is that I miss a lot of information on the 670G and that's not the case with the T-Slim. Um, the T-Slim in general, the things that I am being alerted to when I have alarms going off have to do with my, with my values. Um, either I'm rising, I'm falling. It depends on what my settings are and what I want to know is happening. Um, so if I have my settings um, to let me know that I've gone above a 130, then I'm going to hear it if I've gone above, 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 sorry, above a 130. Um, same is true for a falling blood sugar. If um, I want to know that the, the pump is suspending, then it's going to tell me it's suspending. If I want to know when it's resumed, it's going to tell me when it's resumed. Um, those are all choices that I can make, and I don't have to hear about any of them if I don't want to. Um, there are few, and this is the truth, there are few just real true sensor alerts or alarms that I have to hear. I'm guessing that, you know, the one alarm that tells you that the sensor is coming to an end in six hours or, you know, whatever, whatever that, I mean, there's a couple, but, the, but my sensor is good for 10 days. So there aren't really, it's not often that there's an alarm I really need to tend to. Um, that is not true for the 670G, and I've just figured this out. As I said, I've never silenced it before, so I realized the other day when I silenced my 670G, as much as I enjoyed having it be quiet, um, I found that, especially on a new transmitter, that I was being sent into safe basal repeatedly, um, and it was because it had asked me for a BG, and I hadn't given it one. Um, this is, um, these are, um, this came from the old transmitter where things were really falling apart. So they did update the transmitter. Um, I, I'll talk about that in the transmitter section. And there's a lot of good stuff that came from it, but I do think this is something that they kind of swapped out. And that was that BG required loop. For now, these BG required notifications that don't send you into any kind of loop, but they do send you into Safe Basil if you haven't, if you haven't responded to it. Um, and if you're not aware of what Safe Basil is, in my mind, it's like a little bit of a timeout. I know it's meant to be for safety purposes, but in this case, if it's because I haven't re responded to something rather than I actually need it for my blood sugar, in my mind, that's a little bit of a timeout. Like you need to pay attention and, and, and respond. Um, can't respond if I don't have my alarms on. So in this case, I think that although it is possible to silence the 670G, I don't think I could, I don't think I could do that. Um, sorry. I don't think I could do that. I don't think I could do that. Um, the other day in 
the first 48 hours, and I'll talk about this, um, in the first 48 hours, I think I was put in Safe Basil 16 times. And in Safe Basil, I, I receive um, anywhere between 25 and 75% of my actual insulin uh, basal rate. So that's not gonna work. Um, if I need Safe Basil because I need it for my blood sugar, that's fine. But if I just have missed an alarm, that's not fine. Um, so those are the alerts and the alarms. And oh, I'll also say the um, the Dexcom alerts. I love them when I first went on to them. I thought they were very loud. They're, they're you know they were. Uh, I slept through a lot of my 670G alarms. I'm not gonna say it's 670G's fault. Um, I do think the 670G is a quieter pump for volume um, than the old Medtronic pumps were. Um, that may or may not be real. I don't know. That's that's the way it felt to me. Um, so I did find I was starting to sleep through a lot of alarms. Um, and when I went over to the T-Slim, I was um, you know pleasantly surprised at how how loud and kind of demanding they were and I like that then I then I started up the Dexcom uh, phone app it's even louder this is going to depend on what your phone is set to but mine was I mean like you know jarringly loud um and that was great except for when my family <laughs> except for when we were all having like a get together and all my followers were in one room and you know and the whole house is going off um but it was uh sorry my cat's gonna knock everything over um but it was, there's plenty of potential for volume. Then at some point I found that in the middle of the night or you know, if I was trying to be quiet, I'm in, I'm in the classroom volunteering, I'd like to be able to kind of you know, lower that phone volume a little bit. Didn't know how my friend Joanne and my friends at FUD um, helped me figure that out. So that was a critical piece for me and now I feel like I have a little bit more control. I'm um, knocking out some of the alarms I, don't, I no longer need to hear every time I'm suspending and resuming. Um, I'm controlling the volume and it's kind of coming together nicely and I, and I do like that. Um, so those are alerts. Seven minutes of alerts. And I'm coming back for delivery options for basal IQ versus manual mode um, and then on to the good stuff. That's good stuff too, but on to the sensor stuff. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.